Have you ever been shopping online? Uh, I haven't, but uh, there's something very interesting about, about shopping online when uh, uh, most websites that are, that are good at this kind of thing, they always put a, a kind of a, an incentive to buy now, right? Buy now. You know, only four tickets left at this price. Uh, or, or this reduction is, you know, for Wednesdays only. Or this weekend only. Or it's the, you know, the January sales. So it's like you have to get in kind of January 1st. All those January sales now begin in St. Stephen's Day anyway. But, uh, but there's always something, there's always a reason to, to buy now. Okay, this offer that won't last forever. Or even there's a lot of websites where um, once you log on and you put something into your, into your shopping cart. What's, you know, what's Irish English for shopping cart? What? Basket or whatever it's called. What's it called? Yeah, um, the, the, a timer starts, you know, because the prices are only guaranteed at this price for this amount of time. So you have to buy now, buy now, buy now. And it's a very interesting, it's, 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 a, it's a very effective marketing uh, ploy, which I just did a, a bit of superficial reading into this, but it's, just, it's a very interesting marketing ploy, which uses two uh, emotions or, or two, two principles that are used in marketing that... Uh, draw from certain emotions that we have. So the first uh, principle is the illusion of scarcity, right? There's only a few of these now, there's only a few available, so buy now, right? So you, there's only a few there, so this, 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 only, I'll say a few tickets at this price or a few, uh, you know, get in early to get the reduction or whatever it is. So there's a, a certain amount of scarcity. And that even that scarcity, that, illusion, that, that scarcity can actually be a, an illusion as well, where I, I know of a person who, well, no, yeah, who used to run nightclubs and um, he would put up a sign in front of the nightclub, you know, almost full or full, and it wasn't even close to full. So he'd be walking past going, oh, Jenny, it's full. I mean, so it's kind of a scarcity. If you want to get in there, you have to get in early or you mightn't get in at all. It must be a popular place if it's full. You know, so some, some restaurants that like to have a little bit of a crowd out the front, just a little bit of a crowd, not too much, otherwise people are waiting too long, but not too little, otherwise it looks empty. So yeah, have a bit of a crowd. So this, this illusion of scarcity, because if, if there's, a, there's an illusion of scarcity, then there must be a good product there, but you can't necessarily get it when you want, so you have to, to get it soon, you have to get it quickly, you have to buy now. Uh, that's coupled then with this uh, loss aversion, which is a much bigger topic that I won't go into at all, uh, but uh, that we're, we're afraid of losing things. We're afraid of losing out. So uh, when it comes again to, to, to business or that, they'll often say, you know, buy this product, gar satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. Or your money back, you know. Uh, lowest price guarantee, or your money back. So th they're trying to tap into this, 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 this fear that we have. We don't want to lose. We don't want to lose out. We don't, we don't want to be fooled or codded. So uh, this, if you take away that fear of loss, then customers are more likely to buy. Okay, we have a, an aversion to loss, so take that and remove that, and then customers are more likely to, 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 to buy. Now, again, I find this interesting as regards our faith, because I think it helps to understand not that we want, it's, it's not just we want to market our faith, but like it's actually recognizing the truth behind our faith, which actually uh, taps into some of these emotions as well. The truth behind our faith. So when it comes to uh, scarcity uh, or the illusion of scarcity, obviously God's grace is infinite and never runs out. But when it comes to our time, there is a scarcity of time in the sense that the, the, the good that we can do now, we can only do now. The grace available to us today, you know, is, is needed for today. And once today is over, then we have a whole new set of problems. Not, not, not to look too negatively towards the future, but like, you know, we, we need God's grace today for today. So there, there, there is a certain amount of scarcity in that it's not that we can just do what we want and it'll all work out fine anyway. That's not the way it works. There is a, an, an urgency in the need to, to convert or change today, now. And I think if, 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 if we present the faith in, in, in terms of, actually, look, you know, God is good, and sure, God is grand, and everything is fine, he forgives everything, and sure, there's no problem at all, then there's no sense of urgency whatsoever. You know, if I go to Mass, if I don't go to Mass, I mean, he's good, like, God is good, he's merciful, like. So if you don't go to Mass, I mean, sure, you're a good person anyway, and 
Which, what difference does it really make? Like, I mean, some old priest rabbiting on about Moses or something. I mean, sure, you can watch that on YouTube at home. Absolutely fine. Do you know? And then you see, you see, you see how phrases like that completely take away that, that sense of urgency. And that, as I say, this, this, this illusion of scarcity, or in our case, there is an actual scarcity of time, it does motivate people to move. It motivates people to, in the marketing world, it motivates them to buy. It motivates them to act. But if, if, if we present our faith with, with, in terms of there's no real kind of ash, there's no real rush, there's no scarcity, there's no urgency at all, it does the opposite. It causes us to, to not move, to not act, to not pray, to not engage in the faith at all. Uh, this uh, a version of loss as well is, is, is a very interesting one where, as I say, like, we, we want guarantees that, you know, that the price I'm getting is the best price going or that uh, if, if I'm not happy with it, I can send it back for free or, or that kind of thing. Um, we're afraid of losing. We're afraid of losing out. It's not that we should ever threaten people with hell. <laughs> Never threaten people with hell. Our place in heaven has been paid for by the Lord. But there is actually a danger that we can lose it. There's actually a danger that we could not get to heaven. Again, we're not threatening anybody with eternal damnation. That is not up to me, you, or anybody else. Do you know, we don't damn anybody. Incidentally, God himself doesn't send anyone to hell. The, the, the catechism is quite clear about that. That those who, who go to hell do not want God. It's a self-imposed prison. Those who go to hell choose it for themselves. Very, very interesting. So it's, like, it's a fascinating thought because, again, the, church, the enemies of the church would have accused us of, of using this as a, a, a sledge to beat people into the church or a whip to beat people into the church, you know, this fear of hell. But like the, the, church, the church's teaching is that those who go there choose it. And you'd say, well, why would anybody choose it? Well, good question. Why would anybody choose sin? Why would anybody choose to sin if sin separates us from God? And yet we do it all the time. So, so yeah, there's a, there's a danger of loss there. There's a, 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 and this should, we should kind of tap into that aversion of loss. Our, again, we be very careful how we use this. I mean, I'd say don't threaten people with hell. But like, do, do we want to get to heaven? Do we want heaven? If so, let's do what the Lord asked. Whereas if we say, ah, should we all go to heaven anyway? Which, to be honest, has basically been taught or preached for the last 30 years or more. If we all go to heaven anyway, then there's no loss. There's no danger of loss. So there's no motivation to do anything. There's no motivation to pray or go to mass. or Because we're all going to heaven anyway. Why? There's nothing to lose. You're nothing to lose by not going to mass. You're nothing to lose by not practicing. We're good people anyway, and we all go to heaven. So, but you see how... how Again, this is, this, it's not just a marketing strategy. I just find it interesting to, to use these principles to, to look at our faith. And how do we, again, if, we're, if we want to be missionaries, it's not about, again, being a good advertiser, but we do have to know how to promote our faith in a way that makes it relevant. So there is a sense of urgency. There is a sense of urgency as regards to that kind of, you know, scarcity, that, that illusion of scarcity. There is an urgency about practicing our faith today. And the, the aversion of loss, there is a danger of losing heaven if we don't put God in his rightful place. Again, not that he will send us to hell, but that if I choose myself all of my life, what's to say at the end of my life I'll choose God? That's a, it's a risky play. Another uh, danger or, or reality that we see in our faith is that following the Lord might cause us to lose out in certain things, okay? So if I follow the Lord, it means that my social life is going to look different to those who don't follow the Lord. I mean, what I wear, not really so much for me, uh, what you wear, especially maybe girls, what they wear, how much they drink, uh, all those like that kind of social activity, intimate activity, all of that sort of stuff changes if we follow the Lord. It has to. The way we behave changes. But then, again, this, this fear of loss. 
The enemy is fantastic at using that. If we follow the Lord, you won't have as much fun. You'll be alone. You'll be ostracized. You won't have friends. It takes a lot of time. You have to get up in the morning to go to Mass on a Sunday. You poor thing. You little snowflake. You might melt. You know. Uh, so they're just really, really good at... The enemy is really good at using those principles of advertising as well in order to dissuade us from following the Lord. Also, the, the fear of rejection. And this is our, our first reading today. You know, Jeremiah, who, who had... Not, not just, well, he was afraid of being rejected, but then it came to pass. He was. He was rejected. I hear so many disparaging me. Terror from every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watch for my downfall. Perhaps he'll be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. So this is, you know, again, this is very real. When it comes to our faith, especially with young people, it comes, it's very, very real that we are afraid of loss. We are afraid of following the Lord because of what it might cost. But I think it's good to use that fear of loss in a good way. Lord, we don't want to lose you. We don't want to lose the joy that you promise us. We don't want to lose your blessing. We don't want to lose heaven. We don't want to lose the, the joy that's found only, only in the fulfillment that you can give us. We don't want to lose that. So might we lose a friend or two on the way? Well, if we lose them, they weren't really friends anyway. So you lose an acquaintance or two. Voila, there you go. You'll get over it. Um, it can be hard or, or sad when people aren't, when we're, not, when we're misunderstood. And I think these days as well with social media, it means that the, the loss of a friend isn't a kind of, it isn't so much a private thing or it isn't a hidden thing anymore. It can, it can be quite public, you know, when if people disparage you publicly, online, day and night, it's, hard, it's, it's, it's harder to get away from now. So what do we do? What do we do? We look to the Lord. We look to the Lord. This, by the way, doesn't mean that we look to the Lord instead of good friends. We look to the Lord along with our good friends. We look to the Lord also to provide good friends. But we look to the Lord. We're going, we're going back to him, you know? So, again, if there is this... this uh, as in advertising terms, they use this, this illusion of scarcity, this, this need to, to act now or that that chance might go. Uh, when we talk about our faith, we talk about, when we talk about the Lord, what is it again? Uh, I heard a lovely expression we meditated on last year, but time ill spent is lost forever. Time, it's in the book Divine Intimacy. Time ill spent is lost forever. Phrase that positively. Time spent with the Lord, time spent in prayer, is a gift, is a blessing for all eternity. You know, that, any good deed done lasts forever. Any, any act of love, nothing can take that away. The Lord sees that act of love for all eternity. Time ill spent is lost forever, but time, time used well bears fruit in all eternity. So, as I said, the enemy uses these things to distract us, to dissuade us from following him, to dissuade us from uh, prayer, mass attendance, to dissuade us from changing our lives, so true conversion, in order to, to, be, in order to live according to his will. The enemy will dissuade us from all of that. The Lord, on the other hand, calls us to life and life to the full. Jeremiah continues, But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. Lord, we ask you today to renew in us that sense of urgency as regards our faith, as regards our prayer life. We only have today. We ask you, Lord, to 
as regards that, that aversion of loss, that we will be, have a healthy fear of losing you, a healthy fear of losing your blessing, a healthy understanding that, that we, we need you and we don't want to lose you. Lord, may you guide us as we enter into this holy week to rediscover your healing power, your presence, and the joy of following you. Amen. <laughs>